Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes in X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm in X-Plane 11's default F4 Phantom and this is its interior, fairly nice, and here is its ex exterior which is also fairly nice considering it's a default plane that comes with the program. Uh, I do have a modified configuration file for the aircraft from xplane.org, the forums, and that is because that modified configuration file said that it would help the aircraft perform a little bit more realistically. However, I have not sensed that the flight characteristics are any better. <laughs> Maybe a little bit worse, I'm not entirely sure. It's a tough plane to fly. It's a tough plane to fly. Beautiful. I like the plane, but it's not an easy one. So it's fairly hefty. And we'll see how it goes. The flight is fairly short. If we are going from Manila to Taipei, a 632 nautical mile flight, and that's about the same distance as uh, the previous flight with 747, but this is going to be with a much faster plane. So uh, here we go. We are going to continue listening to the Apollo 13 audio. We will get to the Apollo 13 accident where the service module liquid fuel, uh, sorry, the liquid oxygen tank for the fuel cells. Uh, ruptures. We'll get to that not in this video, not in this flight, but possibly at the end of the next flight or the beginning of the one after that. So that's where we're at as far as that incident is concerned and uh, Houston we have a problem. So that's for your reference. Here goes the audio. And Stand by one on the, uh, just make sure everything's all right. And Let's get some flaps, and here we okay. go. And uh, Ecom says that uh, as soon as you stir your cryos, uh, oh, stirring cryos. Auto. Every time they talk about stirring cryos, it's always. But we're not there yet. We're not at the point where it's a problem. It's not even rotating right now. We're at 180 knots and it's not rotating. Come on. There we go. 200 knots. We are full of fuel, of course. I did not turn on the afterburner because that's not very efficient at this altitude. This is Apollo Control at 36 hours, 50 minutes. During that last series of conversations, Jack Swigert passed along the crew physical status, reporting that uh, they've taken no medication and are all feeling fine. It's doing pretty good and right now. That Fred Hayes uh, gave us an out-the-window description of the Earth and just the feel of the plane. Uh, Fred also played back a short uh, sample of the music that they have on board the spacecraft and reported uh, that the food was fine. Apollo 13 at this time is 137,250 nautical miles from Earth. It's Traveling a noble a looking beast. 40, 219 feet per second. Definitely. The crew should be beginning their scheduled 10 hour rest period. Uh, shortly, that rest period is scheduled to begin at uh, a ground elapsed time of 37 hours. And they've completed uh, all items in the flight plan uh, necessary to uh, beginning the sleep period. At 36 hours, 52 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. And we've got cloud cover. This particular flight should not involve a whole lot of boring landscape. There are islands. And there's only a little gap where there's just just water. So should be okay. This view is particularly good right now. Apollo 13, uh, Houston, we thought you were trying to call, were you? Okay, we can get some afterburner on. I think.
<laughs> okay, Jim, and uh, we'd like you to check your S band normal voice switch off. S band normal off. This is Apollo Control at 37 hours 11 minutes. Uh, that was Jim Lovell reporting just a few minutes ago that the crew was ready to be Yeah, there. that's looking Ten good. Hour sleep period. That sleep period is scheduled to end at uh, 47 God, I like that shiny nose. Time. Here in Mission Control, astronaut Jack Lausma has replaced astronaut Vance Brand as capsule communicator. 13, uh, we'll be off time. Let me monitor the fuel consumption. Of course, we're taking out the drop tank right now. We're looking at um, 12, well, 11,000 pounds per hour from and, uh, each like tank, to to uh, from each engine, uh, sorry. And the internal is about 10,000, so at this rate, about half an hour. So we need hey, to I'll keep climbing, bed. which we are. <laughs> Of course, we'll probably throttle down. We're at full throttle right now. We are past the speed of sound, I believe. This is Apollo Control at 38 hours. Eight at least the uh, plane pitched down to indicate that there was the a lot of drag. It is now about uh, one hour into their scheduled 10 hour rest period. Uh, here in Mission Control, the activity has settled down primarily to watching the spacecraft systems. Let's see, where's our Mach meter? At the present time, Apollo 13 is 140,357 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,100. 35 feet per second. External stores. At 38 hours, 8 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. Hmm. But let me, it doesn't have a Mach meter, because <laughs> I would be very disappointed. This is Apollo Control at 39 hours, 20 minutes. Lock, I have. Uh, we're now some two and a half hours uh, into the scheduled 10 hour rest period. Oh, well, I might be blind, but I'm not Jim seeing Lovell it. Appears to be sleeping soundly at this time. Lovell is the only uh, crewman who is uh, wearing a biomedical harness, according to the uh, plan. And uh, we have uh, almost uh, a little more than seven and a half hours remaining in the sleep period. All spacecraft systems continue to function normally at this time. Apollo 13 now 143,222 nautical miles from Earth, and the spacecraft velocity is 4,059 feet per second. At 39 hours 21 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, we're sort of hanging out at these altitudes. We'll see how it goes. This it's just the default scenery down there now. Outside of Manila. Seven hours remain in the cruise sleep period. Apollo 13 is 144,784 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 4,019 feet per second. The 
the latest s four b impact time update places impact of the third stage of the booster on the lunar surface at seventy seven hours fifty seven minutes four seconds predicted coordinates of impact two degrees ten minutes south twenty eight degrees fifty minutes west this is mission control houston I'm mostly looking at the fuel. I could just bring up the fuel displays in the upper left, but this I'd like to use the instruments if possible. Everything continues to go well aboard Apollo 13. Assuming they are Minister correct. Three crewmen begin the fifth hour of their scheduled 10-hour rest period. Apollo 13 is 147,103 nautical miles from Earth. Traveling at a velocity of 3,960 feet per second. This is Mission Control, Houston. From Taipei, the plan is to fly to Shanghai, and that'll be in an Eclipse 550. This is Apollo Control at 42 hours. Apollo 13 is now 149,375 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,903 feet per second. The crewmen are at the midpoint now of their 10-hour rest period. That rest period due to end about 47 hours elapsed time. This is Mission Control Houston. Well, for a fighter, it's trimming it's fairly well. At 43 hours. It's nice and stable. Four hours remains in the Apollo 13 crew's rest period. Space got to try and bring it up a little. At least according to the gauge, we're not on the internal fuel yet. Traveling a velocity of 3,847 feet per second. The flight dynamics officer has again updated the expected S-4B impact time and uh, coordinates. We're predicting uh, S-4B impact at 77 hours, 57 minutes, 9 seconds. Coordinates of the impact location. I feel like my eye point degrees, is a little bit low again south. this time. 28 degrees, um, 58 minutes west. Uh, that might be too much. Uh, Newsmen in the news center can see the uh, the impact point in relation. That's a little bit better. I was going. I was so low I couldn't see the landscape at all. In, in the news center at this time. That's better. This is Mission Control, Houston. Very important to. Uh, be sitting up nice and tall to see the runway during landing. But it's going to reset, so I'm going to have to reset that. You can see the view outside here. Once I go out and come back in, it'll reset to that view. In the briefing room at the MSC News Center. So, before landing, I'll have to remember to shift up a bit. And times are space station at 9 a.m. The space shuttle at 10 a.m. And the reusable space tug at 11 a.m. We need that space tug. <laughs> All three of these briefings will be conducted in the briefing room in the MSC News Center. Space tug would have been nice. This is Apollo Control at 43 hours, 42 minutes. Apollo 13. 450 knots indicated airspeed is fairly typical limit for Earth. A jet fighter. Of 3, feet per second. Honestly, we shouldn't be going Three this fast during a ferry mission anyway. In the cruise rest period. Astronaut Joe Kerwin is the Capcom now. This morning's briefings on future programs in the MSC News Center will be carried on this release line. 
first one begins in about five minutes at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I guess the uh, afterburn might be just on or off. The topic of that briefing is space stations. Well, no. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control. At yeah, it says the nozzle is closed. I'm, my throttle is basically is just a tiny bit away from the top of the range. If I go to the top of the range now, the nozzle is open, means our afterburner is on. I go down, it's like half the fuel consumption, but we we're also going to lose speed. Alright, I'll just pour it on for now, until the fuel gauge gets a little bit lower. Because of this, the plan now is to move the limb activation time and the TV transmission time from the 58 hours under the plan with them, of course, back to 55 hours. Limb activation and the TV transmission time will now be at 55 hours elapsed time. That's about 8.13 p.m. Central Standard Time this evening. The next uh, briefing in the MSC newsroom will begin in approximately five minutes. The topic will be space shuttles, and that briefing will be carried on this line. This is Mission oh. Control, Houston. Well, unfortunately, the captured audio didn't seem to include the space shuttle briefing. A shame. This is Apollo Control at 45 hours, 47 minutes. Crew wake up time is one hour twelve minutes away. Apollo 12 is 157,720 nautical miles from Earth. Its velocity is 3,701 feet per second. The 11 a.m. briefing on reusable space tug will be carried on this line. This is Mission Control Houston. Apollo Control at 46 hours, 43 minutes. Spacecraft Commander Jim Lovell has just put in a call to us uh, 16 minutes prior to wake-up time. Here's that conversation. Okay, uh, I think if we get in a few minutes, we'll bring it up some food, and we'll, I'll pick up that. Okay, and uh, Surgeon will be ready for your sleep report whenever you get that together. Right, Joe, he's listening. Uh, LMP uh, had a solid nine hours of sleep. I could wake him up this morning. CMP had six hours, and the commander about five intermittent. Not enough sleep. Uh, you should have gotten yeah, sleep. <laughs> They're not going to get much sleep later. Okay, we got it. And uh, it might be interesting that uh, just after we went to sleep last night, we had a master alarm and uh, it really scared us. And we were all over the cockpit like a wet noodle. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't something more significant. Uh, uh, I've also got a, a procedure for you on that H2 tank. Uh, simple thing after you get done stirring up the cryos. I'll get a little bit higher just to save fuel. We've hit the internal fuel now. No more music, please. Hopefully it's so scratchy that it's not going to be recognized by anything. That was beautiful. What was it? I love that with their eyes. I couldn't catch what that was. Sounds like all the comforts at home. You guys got a flower on your breakfast table? Yeah, Jack. The Capcom is astronaut Joe Kerwin. With him at his console is the backup crew commander John Young. 
John Young is always there for no, it seems that way anyway. Apollo 13 is 159,967 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,649 feet per second. Okay, this is the north coast of Luzon, the uh, the northernmost of the main islands of Phili the Philippines. There are smaller islands up ahead. The flight dynamics officer has again updated the S-4B impact time and location. Impact There's a time, string of small Philippine islands minutes, five seconds, on up to where minutes, Taiwan one is. One degree, 54 minutes south. 28 degrees, 47 minutes west. Apollo 13 is 159,967 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 3,649 feet per second. Flight Dynamics Officer has again updated the S-4B impact time and location. Impact time, 77 hours, 57 minutes, 5 seconds. Coordinates, 1 degree, 54 minutes south, 28 degrees, 47 minutes west. Now there's some of the islands. This first one's called Fuga Island. One coming up. Thirteen, this is Houston. Go. Uh, Roger, Joe. Uh, we're standing by for that B-37 flight. Have you have a course? Okay, got it right here, Jim, and it follows. This is the B-37 pad for liftoff plus sixty. The reason for the update is for uh, weather avoidance in the MPL at 119 hours. Uh, same as the one we passed you yesterday, and it's the same weather, but uh, we still don't expect a problem at the end of the mission. The GETI is 06000, Delta VT 6079, longitude minus 153, GET 400K. One one eight zero four over. Island to our left is Dalupiri Island, and the one up front is called Kalayan Island. Uh, Roger, that's correct. Uh, I've got a consumables update for you, Jim, if you're ready for that. Seven hours. RCS total one zero nine or six. Watt Alpha two seven zero. Bravo two seven eight. Charlie two seven zero. So just Delta, keeping an eye on that fuel. Seven eight. And the H two. Uh, they gave me the H twos in percent. Basically, if you. Uh, if we've got half an hour with the afterburner, we've got an hour without, so we're okay. I mean, I'm waiting for it to get to the 8 on the internal fuel, and I'll probably cut afterburners at that point. So this is Kalyan Island below us. Stirred the cryos and the sensor broke. Warning! Warning! Oh, it's, no problem. You're, uh, it's a problem!
which is simply turning the H2 tank two meters to off at this time. And uh, we want to see whether that won't solve the problem of the uh, of the tank pressure setting off caution and warning. We want to look at it that way for a few hours. Okay, you want to pop H2 on the tank meters to off, is that correct? Uh, that's negative, just tank two. We want tank one to stay in auto. Okay, tank two meters off at this time. Okay, good deal. That's been the high tank, and uh, uh, apparently while while waiting for that pressure switch to close to start the heater cycle, the tank one pressure has been dropping even a little bit lower and just setting off caution and warning. So we feel that if we turn off the tank two heater and let tank one activate the heater cycle, we won't get into the caution and warning range. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, at your convenience, we'd like to and accept uh, we're ready for uh, to uplink your state vector now since we will not do mid-course 3. Just a reminder, since it hasn't been mentioned in a while, poo and accept means program zero zero, which sets the computer into idle, and then they flick accept so that the computer will accept data from the ground. So setting it to data and setting it to accept data from the ground. Uh, oh, okay. I was trying to figure out how the islands were. There's a set of islands called the Batanis Islands, it looks like. And this one, well, the big one to our right is Subtang, I think. Or maybe that's just a town on it. It's tough to see. They're called the Batanas Protected Landscape and Seascape. All these islands that are uh, to our right. The other update uh, is concerned with going into the limb three hours early. And I think Vance mentioned to you last night that this was a possibility that you'd like to look at the, uh, at the sheet tank pressure uh, early. And since we're not going to do mid-course three, we'd like land entry at, uh, at 55 hours. Is that okay with you? And we've got a little stretch of water and then we'll be hitting Taiwan. So, a somewhat bigger island next. And we're going to take it out of Afterburner now. Oh no, static. Thirteen Houston, how do you feel? Thirteen Houston, you back with us? Apollo thirteen Houston, are you back with us? Of course, I've cut out silences between each of these calls. Okay, uh, I've gone through the battery charge. It took a little while longer. Stop PTC at 55 hours, and uh, you're 
roll attitude there will be 285 degrees, which is per the flight plan. The high gain antenna angles are slightly different. Pitch 23 and yaw 267 degrees. The TV pass uh, till 5530. The, uh, the standard uh, lemon activation, except for uh, uh, some special steps, we'll give you to uh, to take a look at sheet tank pressure, uh, which I don't have yet. Uh, restart uh, PTC at about 5630, or whenever you're through with the uh, with the lemon activities. And after that, at your convenience, we'd like you to uh, to do the P52 option three that we. Uh, Cancel that uh, 54 and a half hours over. Okay, I'm asking on that one. We'll just be 52 after we start PTC at about uh, 5630. Yeah, the That's two right. visual annoyances is, is the flickeriness on the clouds and then the jaggedness of the shadows. Otherwise, things are pretty nice. We could just solve those. Okay, of course, I could tilt the camera in such a way that they don't appear. The sky is a little bit, could get a little bit smoother, you know, and the sun, okay, there are, there are a few visual issues, but mainly the jaggedness of the shadows and the weird lines in the clouds sometimes annoy me. Oh, there's Taiwan on the map, uh, 50 nautical miles away or less. Ping Chun on the southern tip of it. Wow. I'm just, uh, again, I just turned off the afterburner. I didn't really throttle it down much more than that. It's basically full without the afterburner, but it has slowed down quite a lot. It certainly does not seem like it would be able to maintain Mach 1 without the afterburner, which makes sense. Judging from the way the fuel flow dial is made, it looks like we're at the top of the regular fuel flow because they have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and just tiny dashes for everything beyond that which is like afterburner area or low level area. But we are descending now. Hmm. At the current consumption, we've got an hour's worth, but we don't need an hour's worth, I don't think. So maybe I'll pour some more thrust on.
the proper O2 concentration in the lem when you get to the surface, and uh, this is a method of, uh, of, uh, of doing that by bleeding it out additional nitrogen. Okay, thank you. We can see Taiwan sort of in the midst of the clouds up front. We're over it now, actually. Maybe instead of using my fuel to go fast, I should go low. You either go high and fast or low and slow, and maybe we'll just descend. Just so we can see stuff. Just observe the uh, the shaft uh, readout and see if the jitter occurs on your uh, on your direct readout there. And also, they'd like you to uh, briefly call up a verb 16 now 91 so we can look at the uh, shaft and trunking angles. Okay, uh, let's see if I got it right. Uh, the P52 is 49 hours before coming out of zero on the optic. Observe the shaft and also call up. 1691, let you look at the uh, shaft and turn your angle, observe a possible jitter, whether it occurs in zero position as well as uh, out of zero. Uh, Roger, Jack, that's correct. And uh, if you have time now, I've got a flight plan update for you on uh, looking for the comet benefit. Comet hunting. Very rugged terrain. Most of the cities seem to be on the west coast of Taiwan. After the coast facing mainland China. But yeah, seriously rugged terrain, you, know, you look at that up ahead. If there is, record the optimum roll angle for possible photography prior to reinitiating PTC at 5630 or so. Whenever the Once the plane decides that it's going to be going down, it really likes to go down. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's got a lot of momentum to it. Just checking on consumption quickly. Okay, that's correct. And the last uh, sentence on the update is can't really see the lowlands that well, but they're down, down there at a roll of between the clouds. And LOS at a roll and I guess we'll try and get down there. I mean, now the deal here, Jack, we're here to sightsee. The comet appears to be about 10 degrees away from the sun, and due to the geometry of the uh, of the lem there, shadowing the sun. It, it would appear that you will be able to see the comet through the sextant without getting sun shafting between roll angles of about 45 degrees and 75 degrees. It appears that as your roll gets higher than 75 degrees, although the comet is still in the field of view, the sun is also in the field of view, and you probably will not have any success between 75 and 155 if you haven't got it from 45 to 75. If you do find it, you can see the comet somewhere between 45 and 75 or 80 degrees. Uh, just note that roll angle, and then if, uh, 
if it's feasible, uh, we'd like you to photograph it uh, after the lem entry part of the checklist. Over. Okay, Joe, let me uh, give it back to you, see if I've got it here. After the uh, P-52, during well, the... Well, suddenly we can see... Ah, uh, clouds. It was resetting the clouds. Little peek at what's down below. Can't even see the mountains really well now. Well, I'm gonna break the 250 knot under 10,000 feet rule. We're gonna get under the clouds but go fast oh, that's exactly for once. Right, There's an airport there. Which one is that? Okay, that one. Tainan. Oh, so we probably should not be going down this fast. Yeah, it's irritated going that fast. Should keep it down below uh, 450 no, knots for sure. If you know you're going too fast, treat it gently. Apollo 13's distance is 163,513 nautical miles. Velocity, 3,568 feet per second. This Apollo control at 48 hours, 48 minutes. Uh, oh, well, that doesn't look good. Goal team led by Jerry Griffin is in the process of turning Oop. over to Gene Kranz and his white team. We're estimating a change of ship news conference with Jerry Griffin for 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in the briefing Okay, this is not... ...at the MSC News Center. ...gonna be very picturesque here. I can't get below these. I mean, we're not near Taipei yet. I guess I'll go up again. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 49 hours, uh, one minute. Now on to the flight of Apollo 13. The Apollo 13 spacecraft. Hey, uh, 13 Houston, go ahead. Oh, wait, uh, can we stay here? We'll stay, we can stay here. Uh, maybe this will be good. It's better than down below anyway. From the look of it. There we go. A happy medium. Some clouds, some city. Uh, cloud, get out of the way. Alright, limits like 8,000 feet, not 8 kilometers. Uh, uh, spacecraft platform at this time. Mountains far in the distance now because we've descended and uh, we don't have quite Jack, as uh, much view range. Control 
Houston, uh, Apollo 13, now 164,602 nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,544 feet per second. Fuel consumption seems fine. Well, uh, let's go right above 10,000 feet and go much faster. <laughs> we'll see if that works out for us. So Apollo Control Houston, uh, in the Mission Control Center, Gene Kranz is taking the reins of the flight control team. He's uh, sporting a flashy white vest in uh, the best traditions of his team color. <laughs> remains on as our he makes a point about the vest, the grand. PAO. We're at um, 49 hours, uh, 6 minutes into the flight, and Apollo 13... Okay, that might be a little bit too fast at this altitude. 698 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at a speed of 3,541 uh, feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston. Going pretty good without the afterburner, still. What's our best look? 13 Houston, go ahead and torque. Yep, a little bit low. Okay, time of torquing will be 49 hours, 8 minutes, 35 seconds. Roger that. This right about there is not bad. Uh, 49 hours, uh, 9 minutes uh, now into the flight. The uh, change of shift news conference is still uh, estimated uh, has an estimated start of 2.30 meanwhile in mission control uh, flight dynamics has updated our uh, S4B uh, impact coordinates in time we're presently looking at uh, coordinates of 2 degrees 18 minutes south uh, 28 degrees uh, 50, uh, five zero minutes west at a ground elapsed time of 77 hours, 57 minutes, uh, 5 seconds. Apollo 13 is now uh, 164,814 nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a speed of 3,539 feet per second. Apollo 13, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, uh, for Jack, uh, we missed the star angle difference on the So nice with the fluffy clouds here. That was Jim uh, Lovell, spacecraft commander, responding to Joe Kerwin. We're at 49 hours, uh, 11 minutes now into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, 49 hours, 15 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we'll take down our air-to-ground line at this time, since the uh, change of shift briefing is now scheduled to begin. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Up ahead is... I can't pronounce that. CCK. Whatever that is. Um, this is Apollo Hulong. Control, Houston. Uh, 49 hours, uh, 32 minutes. And then... Chinchu. Apollo 13, but we're not uh, anywhere near Taipei yet. Uh, nautical oh, we've gone way high. Traveling at a velocity of uh, 3,522 feet per second. Uh, since we took the line down for the change of shift briefing, uh, we've had no uh, voice communications with the crew. However, we will leave the line open uh, at this time and stand by and continue to monitor. At uh, 49 hours, uh, 33 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at 49 hours, uh, 35 minutes uh, since liftoff. We're presently looking at uh, the start of limb activation at 55 hours uh, ground elapsed time and uh, Goldstone uh, 
will be feeding the uh, television transmission at that time. Apollo 13 now uh, 165,675 nautical miles away from Earth and traveling at a speed of uh, 3,520 feet per second. A little bit stuttery We're around here. I guess it's all the buildings in the cities. Apollo Control Houston. Still trying to render them. Or maybe there was some airplanes on an airfield nearby. Sorry about that. I have two mugs next to me and uh, accidentally banged them next uh, onto each other. One with coffee, one with water. Guidance, navigation, and control on the GNC. Okay, now that's Taipei International. That's what we want. Apollo 13, Houston. It might be south of the city. We'll see. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, Jack. Uh, I'd like to uh, pass you a switch configuration on the uh, Cryo O2 tanks and give you the reason. Uh, right now, we'd like you to go to Peters Tank One off. Tank 2 auto, which is the opposite of the way you've got them now. Okay, Joe, do we have you back in? Okay, Jack, we're getting you back in. Uh, I hope you copied my, uh, my correction of my mistake. I'm talking about the H2 trial tanks. Like the tank 1 meter to off, tank 2 to auto. Okay, we, we lost you again. Uh, here's our heater configuration now. H2 heaters, one off. Two auto. Oh, there's an airport auto down there. Which auto. one is that? That one okay, is Shinchu. Uh, that's that's not what, what we want. We want this one up here. Uh, when we went to tank one auto, tank two off, uh, we found that the heater cycled at a tank one pressure of about 200. But even though I can see that airport up front right now, we won't head directly towards it because we want to take a look at Taipei if possible. And we should have the fuel for that. Well, it's getting a little bit tight. But yeah, I think we'll be alright. We want to spend the rest of the day using more H2 out of tank number two so as to get an unbalance in favor of tank one. So at the end of the sleep cycle, interesting tucked in belly tank it's got. That's why we have you in tank one off tank two. It's also got the smiley face on the tail, I like that. 
Now the only, uh, I'm sure here there's a purpose to this googly-eyed smiley face, but still, it is a googly-eyed smiley face nonetheless. And we should not ignore it. Okay, good deal. Uh, one other detail for you, Jack. Uh, uh, GNC tells us that the optics jitter is very similar to what we had on Apollo 12. Uh, it's no problem. Uh, but when we're when you're not using the optics, we recommend that you turn the optics power. So I'm guessing off, that below. Uh, 8,000 feet, it's gonna be like blanket clouds the whole way. We'll see. In fact, even on the photo scenery, you can see clouds baked in, so I guess it just tends to be cloudy. I don't know. Certainly cloudy today. It's the airport. There's uh, more, I think it's a domestic airport over here, closer to the center of the city. We're going for the international airport, which, as typical, is way outside. There's some city stuff. We see some buildings. We see that city airport. Hmm. I know that the F4 has. Oh, there's the air brakes, yeah, on the wings, right. Like that. Very good. Still got visibility at this altitude. It used to be cloudy. All right, good. We're going way fast. Oh, here we go. All right. Well, we can sort of see the buildings. Sort of. Kind of. Let's not head towards those trees. That seems to be like a hillside, maybe. Control Houston at uh, 49 hours, 55 minutes now into the flight. Apollo 13 now 166,341 nautical miles away from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 3,505 feet per second. What you heard uh, was a relatively long exchange between capsule communication. Well, on the flight out, maybe we will uh, not have the real world weather and try and see what's actually going on in Taipei. For now, I think I'll just leave it be and take on the challenge of landing. Switch positions for the. Here's a mountain. Used to control redundant heaters in the two cryogenic hydrogen tanks. We're at uh, 49 hours, uh, 56 minutes into the flight and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Now I guess I'll uh, attempt to fly by the it's city again. The flight. We presently show Apollo 13 at a, an altitude of 166,801 nautical miles. Now traveling at a speed Still going of, uh, way too fast for this altitude, but that is this plane's uh, MO. This is Apollo Control Houston at 50 hours, uh, 25 minutes uh, now into the flight. 
That Our looks like the city center, maybe? Or... No, just some city blocks. Miles away from Earth. And uh, traveling at a speed of uh, 3,483 feet per second. Uh, we've had uh, no voice communication uh, with the crew for the past uh, 15 or so minutes. However, we will stand by and continue to keep the line open and live. We're at uh, 55 hours, 25 minutes, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, uh... The buildings are sort of in clumps. I don't know Apollo where exactly the city center is. This looks. I think this is the city center that we're flying over right now. Roger, Jim. If you've got a couple minutes now, I'd like to read up to you the change to the. But there are many clumps of buildings. Procedure that we'd like you to observe at 55 hours and the rationale for it. Over. Okay. Stand by. I have to say the plane has been much better behaved this time than on previous flights I've had with it. To activate the supercritical helium pressure gauging so that you can read it. And now the the concern here is less this supercritical helium pressure reach 1800 psi by 103 hours, at which point we'd be within a possibility of rupturing the burst disk uh, when you activate the dips. Now, based on the that pressure at launch... That is not based on a the problem that happened, but that sure sounds bad, too. PSI per hour between then and now, the pressure should read about 710 PSI. I, I don't know whether they're, like, misdiagnosing what's really going on or whether this is something completely different. I mean, it's sort of the same general system here. Roger. Based on the uh, the pre-launch pressure in the sheet tank and the nominal rise time of about six and a half psi per hour, the pressure should be about seven five hours. But I think maybe this helium tank is related to pressurizing the. Service propulsion system, maybe, or is that is it uh, meant to help feed the fuel cell tanks? I'm not sure. No, we're heading back to the airport. Okay, Joe, I'm on RPC now. How do you read? Thirteen Houston, uh, you're loud and clear now. Uh, Nico tells me he's having a little problem. Nope, with mountains. Wants me to stand by for a Well, we're going way fast. This thing likes to go fast. But we have to go slow now. And in the cockpit, shift my viewpoint a little bit up. No, there's the runway. We're going super fast. I've got the air brakes up. We're gonna go around. I'll take the air brakes in. If the 
pressure is I haven't got the gear down yet. PSI. We're going to have to go into some more detailed procedures. We're going to try to, to, uh, to get PCM data uh, on it for one thing. We may have to have you sit there and uh, stare at the gauge for a while to find out uh, when it clicks up and get an accurate rise time on it. And in an extreme case, we're even thinking about a dipped burn. But we don't really think that'll happen. Now, uh, if you're ready to copy, what I have for you is a change or an addition to the LEM activation checklist between pages TLC1 and TLC2, which consists of seven steps. And if you can find a blank, uh, a blank side there to write it down, and I'd like to pass it up over. Oh, choppy, very choppy. A little bit better now. Okay, the rest of your update was that uh, it's okay if it's anywhere between 660 and uh, 770 PSI. Uh, if it's uh, be above 770, uh, uh, you're going to ask us uh, to consider going back in and uh, page TLC 1-A, step 6. Transfer to LEM power. Okay, coming around uh, again. Okay. Okay, Joe, he's ready to go. Okay, <coughs> step 6. Transfer to LEM power. Parenthesis. Floodlights blink. Caution warning power. Caution light. On. Oh, too far. Report GET to MCC. Panel 11, circuit breaker EPS, translunar bus tie. Close. Uh, gosh darn it, I'm in the middle of the two. Circuit breaker, panel 16, EPS, translunar Okay, gear down, flows. flaps. Circuit breaker, panel 11, lighting, utility, close. And Do not hit the wind turbines. Over. And 13, use and select Omni Bravo, please. Okay, uh, Joe, I uh, created a new page here called TLC1A, item 6, transfer to limp power. And the usual, uh, check that the floodlights blink and I get the caution warning power light on. Uh, I get a GET from Jack and I'll pass that down to you. Item 7, uh, circuit breaker, ZPS, X lunar bus tie, panels 11 and 16. Okay, coming in. Step 8, uh, circuit breaker lighting, the utility on panel 11. And turn on the utility lights. Uh, however, if the lighting is such that I don't, uh, go down. I don't really you can go down now. Uh, right Be now. a good phantom. The, uh, there you go. Okay, that's optional. Uh, the way we have page 
page TLC 1A uh, and brakes. That was all part of step six. You haven't even gotten to step seven yet. Step seven is. Oh, I missed that taxiway. I should have had the wheel brakes on a little bit earlier. And it breaks off. Fred Houston, are you with and me? And breaks off. All right, we have arrived at Taipei. Apollo 13 Houston, are you reading me now? Plane looks good. Worked pretty well. Actually, a lot better than I thought it would. This is Apollo Control. I was Houston. expecting much Harry. more fuss. 13 Houston, loud and clear. What am I on now? I'm gonna stay uh, on the B if y'all wanna take command back and uh, you can let it go. Uh, let's slide a little bit further forward, but I'm and, gonna uh, pause the audio. I'm gonna pause it right there. All right. So with that. Uh, we have arrived in Taipei and next flight will be to Shanghai and so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the com uh, sorry please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time